Welcome to our lecture online. Now to get a complete picture of how carbon dioxide is able to absorb energy that is being radiated from the surface of the Earth, we take a look and see how much of it makes it all the way up to an elevation of 10 kilometers. What is the transmittance up to 10 kilometers? And you can see that there's a really wide band from about 13 micrometers to about 17 and a half micrometers where none of the energy radiated from the Earth reaches an elevation of 10 kilometers. Then we begin to see quite a bit of transmittance. Here we have the next harmonic right here. And then we have another R branch, another uh, what we call P branch, which is not right here on the, um, on the graph. And you can see that there's a fair amount of transmittance or some absorbance even at these wavelengths. So now we're talking about wavelengths of about 12 and a half micrometers. However, if we have to wait until we get up to 10 kilometers before a significant amount is absorbed, that's not going to be very effective in keeping the lower, the lower uh, troposphere warm because by the time the energy gets up that high, there's almost free transmission up to space, so it probably takes a couple interactions between the molecules before the rest of that gets, gets um, transmitted into space. So basically, it is this band right here where carbon dioxide is the most effective, and that's the predominant means and predominant range of wavelengths where carbon dioxide is actually able to keep the, the lower troposphere nice and warm. And so that's the reason. It's because it absorbs this big band of radiation right here. What we're going to do now is compare that to the rest of the spectrum and to what water vapor can absorb to see the full picture of how the lower, the lower troposphere benefits from the greenhouse effect of carbon dioxide and how it keeps the heat in, mainly through this particular band of radiation from about 13 micrometers to about 17 and a half micrometers. And that's how it works.